I'm now for the CBS News Philadelphia Pet Project with animal advocate Carol Erickson and the PSPCA, and not to leave them out, our boy Marvin. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you? Very good. Uh, you know, Mar Marvin, as everybody knows by now, is uh, is a, an alumni of the uh, Pennsylvania SPCA. We've got so many great dogs there. And, you know, one of the things that I think wherever you adopt a dog or however a dog comes into your life, first of all, you're very lucky. But secondly, I think the thing that first-time dog owners and also experienced dog owners should always consider first is how to make this rescue adopted dog more comfortable in their life. Because because these dogs, many of them have come from some pretty rough backgrounds and you don't really know that because maybe they're wagging their tail or maybe they are hiding back into the, uh, into the kennel at the shelter. You just really don't know a lot about what their real background was and they want to make sure that when they get to your house they want to be happy you want to be happy with them and there are things that you can do to ensure that things go a lot better you can build the trust of the animal that you adopt there have been millions and millions of successful transitions from the shelter life to the home life and we want to make sure that you know how to do that with your animal first of all when you are trying to get the trust of your animal one of the key things to do, you don't stare at their at their eyes because you know what? Would you like a stranger staring right in your eyes? So you give them a little space there. Also understand that a lot of these dogs, they may not want to have a million people pawing all over them. Give them the space. Tell people, you know what? Could you give my dog a little bit of space? We're getting acclimated to uh, to life with us. Also, some of the things that you may find really fun to do is way too stressful for the dog in your life, and you just can't do that. So. It, Take it slow. Don't go to the, the you know, the, the pickleball park and expect the dog to be able to handle that. Go very slowly with that. Flooding them with uh, ad adventures is not a good way to go for a lot of these animals that you might adopt, especially the ones that have had the more traumatic backstory. Also remember that an aggressive dog is a frightened dog, that that dog needs reassurance, not somebody who's going to say, I'll show you who's boss, because this is really key. Behaviorists now know that the alpha dog thing is a myth that was uh, brought up by the human standpoint. And even in the wild, behaviorists say there is no such thing as the alpha dog. Effective leaders need to reassure dogs with praise when they do it right, not punishment when they do it wrong. Also, sounds are so important. You know how just great hearing that animals have. Well, keep the sound down, turn down the music, the TV, and importantly, do not yell or argue in front of the dogs. It really stresses them out. It stresses out the kids. It stresses out everybody in the household. So just keep things low key. Also, walk the dog at least three to four times a day. This twice a day walk is not enough for them. And also, when you are out on the multi walks, let them sniff. Very calming for a dog. And also recognize the signs of stress. You know, housebreaking accidents often a sign of stress. You think it's uh, the dog trying to be bad. It's not. It's the dog trying to communicate. I am really stressed when you're out of the house. Also, yawning, lip licking, that sort of thing. So there are many ways that you can encourage your dog once you get them in your house and make them comfortable. And it'll make everybody comfortable in the household, which is exactly what you want. Pennsylvania SPCA, we got some great animals again this morning. PSPCA.org, you can check out all the others. This is Cash. Cash is just two years old. He came to us as a stray in January. He is part of a play group at the shelter, and he is looking for a home that can help him with his training plan. Look at that sweet face. His older kids are the best. Don't you love that face, Jan? Oh, no, so cute. And here are a couple of cats for you, Jan. Bilbo. Oh, thank you. That's quite all right. You don't have your hands full enough with Riley and a baby. <laughs> no. uh, my, my little kitten, so sweet and playful. He does need uh, a little work on his eyes. But Bilbo, just a baby kitten, such an angel. And Snowflake, really pretty cat. This is a three- to five-year-old cat. Look at that face. He just wants the time to adjust to his new family, to build the trust that all the animals need. So remember, adoption success stories abound. They are everywhere. You just have to be smart when you bring them home because it's a new experience, not just for you, but for them as well. It goes both ways. You're learning their background. They're learning your personality. It can all work out if we give each other some time. Carol. Beautifully said. Thank you.